This is the lecture for Louis-Philippe Hodgson's Kant on Property Rights and the State. So just two points to make for this article. So the first is now we're moving into reading some secondary literature. So it's not by Kant, it's just about Kant. And so uh, for the reading quizzes, what you want to keep in mind is that the reading quizzes are always going to be asking questions from the perspective of the article or from the perspective of the author. So they'll ask, uh, so like a, if a reading, if let's say Hodgson says that Kant uh, believed that property is made out of potatoes. So that's probably false. Kant did not think property was made out of potatoes. But imagine that Hodgson said, this is what Kant says. So then if the reading quiz asks, what did Kant think property was made out of? You should answer potatoes, because that's sort of correct from Hodgson's point of view. It's false from the right point of view. But the reading quiz is not asking, what is the right answer? That's that's way too big a question. We don't know what the right answer is. The reading quiz is asking, according to the article, what is the right answer? So take the reading quizzes from the point of view of the article. And that's true not just for Hodgson, but for all the reading quizzes going forward in this class. Uh, it's been true for the ones we've taken already, but that was obvious because we were reading Kant and the quizzes were asking, what does Kant think? Uh, and then second, when, if you were in class on Friday, when we talked about uh, the introduction, or not the introduction, the first chapter in part one of the Doctrine of Right, uh, you might recall Kant's argument um, about assurance. So uh, he said, uh, you know, when I declare by word or deed, I will that something external is to be mine. I thereby declare that everyone else is under obligation to refrain from using that object of my choice an obligation no one would have were it not for this act of mine to establish a right. This claim, however, this claim involves, however, acknowledging that I am turned and, I'm a, and I am under obligation to every other to refrain from using what is externally his. For his obligation here arises from a universal rule having to do with external rightful relations. So when you own something, this sort of imposes obligations on other people. In order to do that, you have to acknowledge that there are obligations imposed on you by other people. I am therefore not under obligation to leave external objects belonging to others untouched unless everyone else provides me assurance that he will behave in accordance with the same principle with regard to what is mine. This assurance does not require a special act to establish. So there was this sort of discussion of this argument that Kant has about assurance. You need assurance in order to keep property rights going or in order to establish property rights in order for property rights to be rightful. And so we talked a bit about this in class and there's this question sort of what does Kant mean by this? I don't think we resolved anything. We're going to see one argument for what does Kant have in mind with this assurance thing, uh, with this passage in Hodgson. So Hodgson, uh, when you get to basically, I think it starts at section four. No, I think it starts at section five. I don't know what. Whenever Hodgson starts talking about reciprocity, uh, you'll notice eventually the reciprocity stuff gets to assurance. Uh, and here's this sort of specific passage. So page 70 is when we get the direct discussion of this. So we'll see Hodgson's uh, discussion of what Kant meant by that assurance uh, question. And that starts page 70 and it goes and it talks about Hobbes and stuff. Uh, and this is part of Hodgson's larger argument building on this sort of notion of reciprocity that he finds in Kant. Um, and uh, so the reciprocity, I, th I think it maybe starts in section five. I should have looked this up. Uh, anyways, so uh, one big thing to draw from this Hodgson article is the use that he's making of this kind of reciprocity idea and where he thinks it's coming from in Kant and what work he thinks it's doing in Kant and especially what work he thinks it's doing with respect to this assurance stuff we looked at earlier. So sort of think about that and uh, look at that. Uh, Everything in this article is interesting and useful, and it's stuff that we can agree or disagree about. I think the reciprocity stuff is uh, maybe one place in which people are going to push back against Hodgson uh, in the future. So that's one reason I'm drawing your mind or your eyes to it. And the second is that it gives us one way of understanding assurance. And I think we're definitely going to see different ways of thinking about this kind of assurance thing. I say definitely. <laughs> 
It may not actually come up explicitly in the later readings, but this is just Hodgson's view of this assurance thing is just one possible way of understanding it. So sort of think about what do you think of this interpretation? Uh, does it sound good? Does it not sound good?